Howdy, everyone. I'm going to talk about eight signs of secular creep. These are the ways that secularists have been using to destroy our society. So stay tuned. The first one, devalue humans by promoting women's choice to electively abort their innocent unborn children. Only 1% of abortions are due to rape or incest. So let's focus on the 99%. This view promotes women's bodily autonomy over her baby's right to live, ignoring the woman's contribution to the act that resulted in the baby's conception. Number two, empower the strongest in society to eliminate the weakest through elective abortions of unborn children with chromosomal irregularities, such as Down syndrome. Iceland has almost eliminated Down syndrome by aborting almost 100% of the babies that test positively. Three, encourage tolerance for unbiblical views that disregard traditional gender roles and the value of marriages between a man and a woman. Number four, promote socialism, Marxism, or communism over capitalism and free markets. The former is a shift from one power, the business owners, to another, the government. At issue is business owners are forced to be efficient and profitable to remain in business, while governments, not so much, they can print money and tax irresponsibly. The latter leads to starvation and widespread corruption, as we've witnessed over the past century in the USSR, China, Cambodia, Cuba, Vietnam, and North Korea. Five, claim people are systemically oppressed in Western societies due to their race and gender. The United States has not eliminated racists, but we have created laws to eliminate systemic racism. Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 protects people from discrimination in the workplace based on race, religion, color, gender, and national origin. Title IX of 1972 protects people from discrimination in education programs or activities based on race, gender, nationality, or ability. The Fair Housing Act of 1968 protects people from redlining, which is a practice that discriminated in the terms, conditions, or privileges of sale of a dwelling due to race or national origin. Number six, encourage the legalization and or acceptance of prostitution and related lewd acts that degrade women and corrupt morality. The Harvard Law and International Development Society found that on average, countries with legalized prostitution reported a higher incidence of human trafficking inflows. Furthermore, 82% of 2,500 federal trafficking cases involve victims under the age of 18. Number seven, pretend we have no objective moral values and duties to do what's right and value life and be kind, fair, just, and truthful with our fellow world travelers. Why? If we have such values and duties that are transcended to cultures, generations, and people, it follows that we have an objective and transcendent moral lawgiver, God. Those who deny that believe morality is relative, so they have no objective way to condemn the egregious actions we often see in our own or other societies when such actions are tolerated in those places. Consider human rights violations in China today, whether they've locked up around 1.5 million Uyghurs or Muslims in re-education concentration camps. The world can appeal to the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, which stands up as an axiomatic truth that holds the value of life to be axiomatic. The axiomatic value stems from Christianity as documented in the writings from Tom Holland, Alvin Schmidt, Joel Edmund Anderson, and Francis Schaeffer. In other words, prior to Christianity, people were treated differently. You did not see egalitarian laws that gave us equal representation in the eyes of the law, which is of course also a reflection of the eyes of the Lord. As we recall from Galatians 3.28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And number eight, our final issue, promote universalism, claiming that everyone will be reconciled to God in heaven, despite their wishes while on the earth. To claim that universalism is biblically sound, discount the many passages that discredit the doctrine, claiming superior exegesis, mistranslations, or historical insertions. While Jesus Christ sacrificed himself for everyone on this planet, opening the door to his mercy, grace, and love, not everyone has accepted his offer. It is not reasonable to claim that all eventually will. God has given us the free will to choose our pathways. The parables of the banquet, the weeds and wheat, 
the goats and sheep, the two builders and the rich man and Lazarus underscore a separation between those who desire to be with Jesus and those who don't. Daniel 12 makes it clear that some will be eternally punished while Revelation 21 points to the second death. Jesus further taught us to seek the narrow gate, noting that many would not be able to enter it. Identifying the problems we're facing is the first step in moving society toward Jesus Christ's ideals, which have fueled our institutions in positive ways for centuries. Christian leaders have provided medicines, property rights, free markets, industriousness, scientific breakthroughs, hospitals, charities, universities, K through 12 schools, and egalitarian legal systems. Christian leaders have affirmed our objective moral values and duties, creating societies that elevate individuals and the basic human right to life for both the strong and the weak. Despite so many tremendous achievements over the past 2000 years, secularists have been creeping in, promoting anti-Christian values and morality. Christian leaders need to come forward today to prevent further societal degradation by eradicating secular creep. If heavenly values thrived in our world while hellish values perished, we would not be able to distinguish this world from heaven. So whether you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Thank you. Please like and subscribe and do come again.